Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. This week's episode is called Logan's Back. Logan McNair is a college professor and novelist based out of Burnaby, BC, and I'm so excited to have him as a returning guest on the program. Logan, if you can believe it, you were a guest back in 2020 in September. You had just launched your debut novel, Pen and Jarek. We had a great discussion, and now you are back to discuss your second novel, Troll, which I just finished on the weekend, and I loved it. And for our viewers out there, actually, sorry, welcome back, Logan. <laughs> Thank you. Great to be back. I cannot cannot believe it's been three years since we did this last time. It does not feel that long ago, but great to see that you're still doing it, and I'm happy to be here again. Oh, thank you. Well, I am, as I said, I'm thrilled to have you back. I loved Troll. And for our viewers who have not heard about Troll, can you tell us what your novel is about? Sure. Uh, so basically, it's a book about connection and disconnection and the sort of modern age of the internet that we live in. And it follows the story of this young man who uh, desires to be an actor. And through a sort of series of events, ends up sort of accidentally becoming the figurehead of a sort of online extremist movement. And um, this position he finds himself in brings him, you know, the fortune and fame that he sort of always wanted throughout his entire life. But then he kind of has to grapple with this question of, well, uh, is this position and is this fame worth what I'm doing and worth the sort of negative impact that I'm having on the people that follow me. And that's the sort of main central plot, but really it's a much larger sort of discussion about modern connection and modern alienation and, and how the internet has kind of affected us and, and affected these kind of things. Yeah, and I mean, Logan, you take us in a world, like I know that there's things in the internet that I have like chat rooms and things that you're probably someone like me might not know about but you just take us into this incredible world which is a little scary shocking and this very much exists out there yeah definitely and that's kind of one of the things I wanted to do with this book was was shine a light on some of that stuff um, so, you know, people that have grown up on the internet and have a lot of, spent a lot of time online, a lot of this stuff will be somewhat familiar to them, but, uh, for people that haven't, they might be sort of seeing this kind of world for the first time and, and, and maybe getting a sense of how, uh, how ugly it can really be. So yeah, I wanted to kind of shine a light and, and sort of, you know, use the screens that we've been looking at to sort of reflect our own sort of selves and, and see, look, this is what is happening. This is the reality that's out there. Um, without sort of you know condoning it obviously but just presenting it as 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 accurately as I was able to do now Peter Riley your protagonist he is a very interesting fella like as you alluded to you know he gets kind of caught up into the fame and it just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling and he's producing more and more videos on YouTube as a reader like I'm just thinking, oh, you know, Peter, please, please stop, you know, do the right thing. <laughs> just, just stop. Um, where did this character originate from? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's, that's an interesting question. And yeah, I did want to, I did want his journey to be kind of frustrating for the reader, right? Because I did want it to be like, you can see him kind of going down this, this path and, and, I did want that to be frustrating, but where he came from was, you know, growing up and spending a lot of time on the internet. And then later on in my life doing kind of academic research on the types of extremist movements that are depicted in this book. I spent a lot of time basically watching the types of people that Peter was based off of. And he's kind of an amalgam of a lot of different kind of, you know, media personalities and internet personalities and that sort of thing. And I'd always watch them and they'd always be saying these kind of, you know, and from my perspective, these very kind of terrible, heinous, outrageous things. And part of me was always like, 
do these people really believe what they're saying or are they just saying this because they know this is what their sort of fan base wants to hear do they actually have these convictions or are they just you know playing a part and that kind of thought got me basically was the sort of genesis of this character and of the book more generally is what if somebody kind of didn't believe anything that they were saying and they're only doing this as an act in order to you know get this notoriety or get this kind of infamy so that's kind of where the first spark of, of that yeah. character came yeah and you know as a reader like I I didn't feel sympathetic but I was fascinated by him because of how caught up and wrapped up in the world like someone who doesn't believe what they're saying but keep saying terrible things because their audience is getting bigger like I just found him fascinating like knowing he's doing the wrong thing but he keeps on mm -hmm. going so as the creator of Petro Riley were you sympathetic to him at all Logan or like how do you feel about him uh, <laughs> Sort of empathetic, yes. And that doesn't just go for him. That goes for pretty much everyone in the book. And as you know, I mean, there's a lot of terrible people doing and saying terrible things in that book. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I don't condone any of that. But part of being exposed to these individuals and these groups for so long, and you know, studying them professionally, yeah. academically, and that sort yeah. of thing. One of the things that I was always interested in is like, well, what brings people to these situations in the first place? Like what would cause a, you know, quote unquote, normal person to get swept up into one of these kind of extremist movements and that sort of thing. And for me, it always comes down to this question of, you know, disconnection and, and alienation and Peter and pretty much every other character in the book, basically, I think in some way, shape or form is experiencing a type of disconnection. They're looking for, some semblance of belonging or community or acceptance that's um, I think the modern internet age has made it kind of hard to find sometimes so do I uh, sympathize with Peter no kind of do I agree with what he does obviously not but there is a part of me that, that that does kind of empathize with why he's doing this in the first place because fundamentally you know we all have a desire to feel accepted and to feel like we belong to something and to feel like that we can connect with other people but that's not always easy to do in this kind of you know hyper connected world of ours so yeah yeah and I found as a reader I I maybe not sympathetic to him but to all of your other characters in the chat rooms like my heart mm -hmm. really went out to them as you're talking about this this um disconnection and um was this also another element like you, you talk about that you, you, you know, you research extreme extremist groups and behaviors online. Was that kind of what kickstarted the novel in general for you? Yeah. Um, and usually I try to keep those two worlds separate. I have like my, you know, day job as an academic, and then I like to write fiction in, in my free time. And I usually kind of keep those worlds separate, but um, because I was so caught up, in doing this stuff academically, I found it I found it really hard to get away from it. Even when I was at home, I was I was always thinking about it. Um, so it was like a big part of my life that I couldn't really fully get out of my head. And I had write I had written you know academic papers, I'd written a PhD dissertation, I had said all these things. But even after all of that, I felt that there was still things that I wanted to say on this topic, and there were still things that I wanted to present that I couldn't really do from a more sort of um, academic viewpoint. So um, it was very much sort of done side by side along with a lot of other kind of larger academic projects and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it was just a matter of not being able to get this out of my head until I really had said everything that I wanted to say about it. And this book allowed me to kind of say some of those things that were left unsaid. And how do you feel now that the book is finished, is there any sense of relief or? Uh, I've spent a lot less time on the internet <laughs> um, <laughs> because there was a period there for, you know, three or four years where it was like all day, every day, I was immersed in these communities, on these message boards, in these chat rooms, exposing myself to all these terrible things kind of day in and day out. And it was starting to kind of take a toll on me. Yeah. you know mentally and emotionally it was starting to I think affect me so 
I finished the book around the same time that I finished my sort of um, grad school studies and that sort of thing. And that was nice because I was able to kind of walk away from both of them and, and you know, turn off the computer screen, so to speak. And since then, I've spent a lot less time on the internet. So I'm probably a lot less in touch now than I was a few years ago when I was, you know, writing these things. But um, it was nice to get them out of my head and to kind of move on from that world a little bit. Yeah, I can imagine. And as someone who's spent so much time on the internet, um, how, how do we get ahead of, of this extremist rhetoric that's going on, Logan? It, can we get ahead of it or? Uh, yeah, that's a, a really great question that I wish I had a nice, simple, easy answer for. Um, and it's a question that, you know, we've been, people have been trying to answer for a long time and, and, yeah. and I don't think there is a quick and easy answer to that. Um, but I would say that from my perspective, and this is kind of, as I mentioned earlier, the kind of the main point of the book or the main point that I was trying to make is that for me, most of this stuff, maybe not all of it, but most of it, I think stems from this place of alienation and disconnection. So I think if we can provide those things for people, especially for young people, um, and give them that sense of connection and belonging and, and that sort of thing, community, identity, whatever it is, um, I think that will go a really, really far away toward mitigating a lot of this kind of stuff. I think it's, I think, you know, based on what I've learned and based on research that I've done and all that kind of stuff, the people that tend to get swept up into these things, especially young people, are those that are missing that sense of community and belonging. And what a lot of these kind of movements do and what a lot of these kind of extremist ideologies do is they prey upon people that are feeling those types of, you know, uh, things in their lives. And they say, hey, there's something in your life that's missing or you're feeling lonely, or you're feeling alienated, or you're feeling like your society has forgotten you or doesn't want you or whatever, hey, well, uh, we have the answer to those questions. And, you know, they're not good answers, obviously, but um, sometimes an answer is all people need. So uh, I think if we can find a way to do that, and obviously that's easier said than done, but if we can find a way to provide people with those bonds and connections and relationships in their life, I think that will go a very, very long way toward toward helping this current situation that we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I, I I was saying to you before we before we hit that record and came on air just how much I enjoyed the book and how fascinated I was by it. And just want to send lots of love and light out to everyone out there and and just I think that's so important in this time and and you know, Logan, how how have people been responding to your book so far? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of all over the place, which is it's cool because obviously I know that this is not you know this is not a feel good read at the beach kind of summertime novel. Yeah. So I I knew that uh, you know the the subject matter is obviously can be quite troubling. It can be quite intense. So um, the reaction for some people, it's ooh, I've I've never really had much experience or exposure to this world or to these things. Is it really that bad? Is it really that intense? Or surely you must be playing it up or making it seem worse than it is? And actually, the answer is no. It's it's the opposite. If anything, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm toning it down for the book because yeah. you know if I made it as bad as it really was, it would be you know unreadable. So if anything, it's toned down. Um, so some people have you know found it kind of hard to navigate the the kind of troubling subject matter which um you know was partly my intention i didn't want to just make people uncomfortable for the sake of making them feel uncomfortable but yeah. i did want to present a sort of you know realistic depiction of what is happening and then there's other people who have read it especially um people that have you know kind of grown up on the internet and have a lot of exposure to these kind of worlds that i'm depicting here and they say yeah that's that's pretty accurate or that's pretty true to, uh, you know, how I remember it and, and that sort of thing. So uh, that's good to hear because I have tried to present it as um, authentically as possible and as, you know, accurate as possible as to how these things are and how these people talk and what these things look like and that sort of thing. So um, 
yeah, the reaction's been, you know, all over the place, which is great to see. And it's great to see that people are able to sort of take different things from it and focus on different things and, and, and ask these kind of questions and, and, and maybe even start looking into this kind of stuff a little bit more. So, uh, yeah, uh, as, as a writer, that's all you can really hope for is that people are responding one way or the other, um, yeah. to the stuff that you're putting out there. Well, you certainly gave us a, a lot to think about, Logan. And from a, a writer's perspective, technically, I love the way you structured your novel. Like for people who are used to, you know, in chapter one, two, three, four, five, that's not what you're going to get. Can you just kind of tell us, walk us about, be, uh, la, la, if I could talk, <laughs> can you uh, explain to our viewers just how you structured the novel? Because it really is fantastic sure uh, thank you for that um it's it's like almost like an epistolary novel in that it's mostly told through um you know text messages email exchanges chat rooms message boards you know online articles so you know blog posts journal entries so it's all kind of told through these kind of static documents that you would find on the internet and um so very rarely is it told in like a conventional kind of narrative format it's it's primarily told through these kind of living documents and then um it's also as you, as i'm sure you noticed kind of all over the place in terms of the timeline yeah. um which i didn't do just to just to be you know kooky or just to throw people off but i think uh, it was set up in such a way where if you follow this timeline even though it's kind of out of order it bounces all over the place over this period of about you know three years um it does I think make kind of narrative sense in terms of how you track these things and how you follow these things. And, you know, you get hints of things that are going to happen later on, early on in the book, you get hints of like big events that are going to happen later on. And then later on, you get to see those big events. And um, so I've, you know, I, I like stories that are told in that way myself, books, like movies, that sort of thing. I'd like when they take this kind of unconventional approach to, to narrative and to storytelling. I think that is an interesting way to do it. And um, for me, um, maybe it's, I don't know, my internet rattled attention span, but I tend to favor, you know, short chapters when I'm reading. And I wrote it with that in mind. So that, you know, most of the chapters are very, very short, like a page or two. Yeah. Um, and that's just a way to sort of, I think, keep it somewhat engaging and to sort of also have it be a representative of like how we engage with information on the internet in general, right? When we're scrolling, when we're just yeah. on the internet, it's all very quick. It's all very punchy. So I tried to structure the book in a way that kind of replicated that to some extent. So it, it's sort of like the internet on the page in a sense. That's exactly what, how I felt when I was reading it. I'm like, this is awesome. I feel like I'm online, but holding a book in my hand. Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed that. And I think viewers will too. <laughs> so I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to hold it up again one more time. Here's the cover. It's Troll, published by Now or Never. I will put links down below so viewers can purchase a copy of your book Logan and a great big thank you for being a returning guest on all about Canadian books and I just really appreciate your time and congratulations on your second novel thank you so much and and likewise thank you so much for having me back on uh maybe I'll see you again in another three years uh yeah when, when the next one comes <laughs> yeah. up Absolutely. We can keep we can keep this going every every three years or so. <laughs> yeah. Just do a check in. Perfect. And viewers, thank you so much for watching.